Hello friends. In this session, we will be talking about profit and loss and how are they used in our practical life. So let's first understand the terms related to profit and loss. First is the cost price, which is called, which is written as CP also. Cost price is the price at which a thing is purchased. So that is the cost to the person who is buying a product. That is called the cost price. Selling price is the price at which the a particular thing is sold. So supposing we are talking about a shopkeeper, the cost price would be the price at which the shopkeeper buys or purchases a particular item and the selling price would be the price at which he sells it. Profit is when a thing is sold at a price which is higher than the purchased price, then you make a profit. And the difference in the two, which means difference in the selling price and the cost price is the profit. So supposing a shopkeeper buys a pen for 3 rupees and he sells it for 5 rupees. Now that 2 rupees, that is, that is the difference between the two costs is the profit in this case because the selling price is more than the purchased price. So we can say profit is selling price minus cost price. So profit happens only when the selling price is more than cost price. So clearly it is selling price minus the cost price. Loss is when a thing is sold at a price less than the purchased price. Say for example the shopkeeper bought a pen for 3 rupees and he has to sell it for 2 rupees for some reason. So now that is there he is making a loss. He is not making a profit. He bought it for 3 rupees and he is selling it for 2 rupees. So the difference again in the cost of the two is the loss, but in this case the cost price would be more than the selling price. So the loss is CP minus SP. So now uh, we are all familiar with the usage of percentage. It gives us a direct comparison as the standard is taken to be 100 in that case. So we have already done percentage in the previous classes. So now let's understand percentage profit and loss. Since we compare the selling price with respect to the cost price to find the profit or loss, the profit or loss is always found with respect to the cost price. Now as the name suggests, the percentage profit or loss gives a measure of the profit of profit or loss for CP equal to 100. So if we are saying that the customer bought a pen for 3 rupees and he made a profit of 2 rupees on that by selling it at 5 rupees. Now this 2 rupees is a profit on the cost price. But when we are saying profit in percentage, what do we mean? It is the profit when the cost price is 100 which would mean 200 by 3 which comes out to be 66 2 by 3 percent. So this is the profit at percentage. So when we say profit percentage or loss percentage we are talking about the profit or loss when the CP is when the cost price is 100. So percentage profit would be nothing but profit divided by the cost price into 100. So we are saying if the profit is 2 rupees by the cost price in this case is 3 and we multiply it with 100 because we are want, wanting to find out the profit if the cost price is 100. So this is what it comes out to be. And of course percentage loss would be loss by CP into 100. And when we say only profit and loss, we are talking about the absolute value of the profit or loss. Now let's see the relation between selling price and the cost price. In case of profit, selling price is always more than the cost price. So we are saying selling price is equal to the cost price plus the profit. And now if we 
replace this profit with percentage profit expression when we can say that the selling price is equal to cost price plus percentage profit by 100 into cp so this term is nothing but the profit so if we take out cp common from both these terms we get selling price is equal to cost price into 100 plus percentage profit divided by 100. So, this is the relation between the selling price and the cost price. And if we want to find out the relation of cost price with respect to selling price, then it will come out to be, we will just take this part in the brackets to the left hand side and we get CP on the other side. So, we get CP is equal to SP into 100 divided by 100 plus percentage profit. So now uh, let's see what will be the relation between the selling price and cost price in case we are making a loss. Now selling price of course in case of a loss is less than the cost price and the relation is selling price is equal to cost price minus the loss. And now we replace this loss with its percentage loss equivalent expression which gives us that the selling price is equal to cost price minus percentage loss by 100 into CP. And again, we take out CP common. So, we get selling price equal to CP into 100 minus percentage loss by 100. And we can say CP is equal to SP into 100 by 100 minus loss percentage. So, now let's see what is the general relation between SP and CP. So, we can say that SP is equal to CP into 100 plus minus P or L percentage divided by 100. So, when we say P, it, we are talking about profit. And we, when we say L, we are talking about loss. And when we are talking about profit, then we will have this plus sign. In case of a loss, we will have the minus sign. So, this plus minus is indicating that with P, it is plus. With L, it is minus. And the expression other than plus and minus remains the same. So, this is how we will use a general relation between CP and SP. And similarly, finding out CP in terms of SP, again we will have CP is equal to SP into 100 by 100 plus minus P or L percentage. So, plus again with profit, minus with loss and this is OR profit or loss. This is not indicating profit by loss. This is profit or loss. And according to that profit or loss, the sign is chosen. Now, let us understand what is the use of doing, learning the profit and loss and the relation between cost price and selling price. Now, of course, the first use that we have is solving the maths questions but that's not the that's not the use that's how we learn to you learn to use this in the practical life so profit and loss is very useful in everyday life in dealing with different transactions now how what kind of transaction now supposing we are running a business supposing uh, we, we just took an example of a shopkeeper now when a shopkeeper buys a pen he needs to find out what should be the selling price that it that he should sell the pen at so as to make some profit. Now, he is not going to run a business to make losses. So, this profit and loss is used in evaluating the profits that are made while running a business with respect to the investment over a period of time. So, as we took an example of the pen, so he made an investment of 3 rupees and he made a profit of 2 rupees on that. So, now when you are running a business, now this could be the direct profit that we, we can see. So, when you are running a business, that is what we need to evaluate. How much is the profit on the investment that we have made? Now, 2 rupees of profit on 3 rupees is a good profit. But supposing he buys something at 300 rupees and he makes a profit of 2 rupees on that, sells it for 302, then it is not a very good profit, it may not be good for running a 
business. So this is where it is used. This evaluation is used in planning the selling price, the marketing expenses and other things while running a business. So here we've just taken an example of buying a pen at 3 and selling it at 5, at five making a profit of 2 rupees. But knowing that if he is buying a pen at 3 and he is running a shop which has other expenses like the like keeping some manpower in the shop, the electricity bills, the other expenses of the type that he has to do for marketing and other things that he might have to run to do to get that to to buy the products, buy the things that he want to, wants to sell. So he besides making the expenses on buying the product, he has to make other expenses also. So when we evaluate the profit, the profit is evaluated based on all the expenses that he's making and that is how the evaluation is done and this helps in evaluating in planning how much should be the selling price of that particular commodity to be able to make some profit on it so it overall the profit and loss basically overall helps to ensure that the business is viable viable means that the business makes some profit Now let's talk about discounts. Now discounts also come under the similar category of profits and loss because they are also used to evaluate how much would be the profit that you make after the discount. So discounts are always offered on the marked price as compared to the profit and loss which are always based on the cost price. So we, just, we were just saying that if he buys a pen for 3 rupees he makes a profit of 2 rupees on 3 rupees. So we were always talking about the cost price when we are saying, when we are talking about the profit and loss. But when we are talking about discounts, it is always offered on the marked price. And the marked price is definitely different. It is not the same as cost price. Marked price means whatever is the, you, you must have heard of the term MRP or the price which is marked, which is, tagged on the particular commodity that is the marked price and discount is always offered on that price. Discounts are normally given as percentage of the marked price. It is normally given the 20% discount. So 20% discount on the marked price, 30% discount on the marked price. It is very rarely mentioned that the discount of a fixed amount say 100 rupees on this particular commodity sometimes you you get discounts of that nature also but normally it is given as percentage of the marked price selling price will be the mark, marked price minus the discount and when we say minus discount we're talking about in terms of value not percentage so if it is given in terms of percentage then we'll find out the value which would be like 20% of the marked price which would mean 20 by 100 into the marked price. So this would come out to be the discount. So we will get the selling price by subtracting this discount in terms of value from the marked price. Profit and loss are evaluated based on this calculated selling price and the cost price. So after uh, removing the discount from the marked price, you get the selling price. And then based on this selling price and the cost price of that commodity, you will get the profit and loss. Now, these were simple single transactions that we were doing. That if we have, we bought something for 3 rupees and sold something for 5 rupees, we get a profit. If we buy something for 3 rupees and sell it for 2 rupees, we get a loss. If we have bought something for 3 rupees, marked it for 5 rupees and given a 20% discount on that, so we get a 20% discount on 5 rupees makes it 1. And so the final selling price would be 4. So we again get the profit from there. But these were very simple transactions, but we could have multiple transactions also happening, which you have also must have seen in the market something like discount over a discount. 
So sometimes they say 50% discount after 50% discount on the mark price. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that you get 100% discount? You get the th uh, thing for free? No. This is discount over a discount, which means 50% on 50% of marked price. So which would mean that supposing the marked price is 100, we first get a 50% discount on this which makes it 50 rupees and then you get a 50% discount on this which makes it 25. So we are saying although this is the marked price, this is the selling price. And we can clearly see this is resulting in a net discount of 75%. So you can't, this is important thing to remember this, you can't just add these two discounts. You can't add when there is a discount over a discount, you can't simply add the two and say that this is the total discount. Because otherwise, this would have been 50 plus 50 and 100% discount and you should have gotten this thing for free. That's not how it works. It's a discount on the first discount that you got, which is 50% on this and then 50% on this. So you get a net discount of 75%. So this is another thing where we use the same approach. Then you have something like an increase on the cost price followed by a discount. So you have the cost price, you increase this, you supposing the cost price was 100 rupees, you first increased it by say 100% and you made the marked price to be 200 and then you give a discount of 50% on this. So what does that mean? That you are now selling this for 100, which means you are selling it for the cost price and making no profit, no loss in this whole transaction. So you are saying increasing the cost price by 100% and then giving a discount of 50% results in no profit and no loss. So this is how we are going to use multiple transaction. It has to be first transaction completed and then we put the, the then we start with the second transaction over it. We don't add the two simply. Now sometimes we have a number of objects. Supposing I have two pen and both purchased at rupees three. Now I say some of them are sold at profit and some are sold at loss. So out of these two, I say I sell this first pen for rupees 5 and I sell the second pen for rupees 2. So now this is clearly sold at a loss and this is clearly sold at a profit. So now here, if we have to find out the net profit and loss, we will first find out the total cost price and the total selling price and then we will find out the profit or loss on the net transaction. So net could be loss also. Friends, I hope you enjoyed the session. If you find it useful, Please like it and share it with your friends. You can visit us at our Cool Smart Learning website and post your queries there. And please subscribe to the Cool Smart Learning channel for getting updates on the new sessions. Thank you.